A reading from the New Testament of the Christian Bible in 2 Peter. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle, special, special messenger, personally chosen to rep representative of Jesus Christ. To those who have received and possessed by God's will a precious faith of the same kind as ours, by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace, that special sense of spiritual well-being, be multiplied to you in the true intimate knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. For his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness, through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has bestowed on us his precious and magnificent promise of inexpressible value, so that by them you may escape from the immoral freedom that is in the world because of disreputable desire and become sharers of the divine nature. For this reason, applying your diligence to the divine promise, make every effort in exercising your faith to develop moral excellence and in moral excellence, knowledge, insight, and understanding, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, steadfastness, and in your steadfastness, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly affection, and in your brotherly affection, develop Christian love. That is, learn to unselfishly seek the best for others and do things for their benefit. For as these qualities are yours and increasingly, as you grow towards spiritual maturity, they will keep you from being useless and unproductive in regard to true knowledge and greater understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For whoever lacks these qualities is blind, short-sighted, closing his spiritual eyes to the truth, having become oblivious to the fact that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, believers, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. Be sure that your behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. For by doing these things, actively developing these virtues, you will never stumble in your spiritual growth and will live a life that leads others away from sin. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly provided to you. Therefore, I will always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know them and are established in the truth which is held firmly in your grasp. I think it right, as long as I am in this earthly tent, to inspire you by reminding you, knowing that the laying aside of the earthly tent of mine is eminent, as the Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. Moreover, I will diligently endeavor to see that it, even after my departure, will be able at all times to call these things to mind. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories or myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitness of his majesty, his grandeur, his authority, and his sovereignty. For when he was invested with honor and with the radiance of Shinnekeh, glory from God the Father, Shekinah, such a voice as this came to him from the splendid majesty glory in the bright cloud that in the bright cloud that overshadowed him, saying, This is my son, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased and delighted. And we actually heard the voice made from heaven when we were together with him on the holy mountain, so that we have the prophetic word made more certain. You do well to pay close attention to it as a lamp shining in the dark place until the day dawns and the light breaks through the gloom and the morning star rises in your hearts. But understand this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter or comes from one's own personal or special interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but by men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The rise of false prophets. But in those days, <clears throat> false prophets arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will subtly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing swift destruction to themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways, and because of them the way of truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false arguments and twisted doctrine. Their sentence and condemnation which God has decreed from a time long ago is not idle, but still in force, and their destruction and deepening misery is not asleep but on its way. For if God did not even spare angels that sinned, 
but threw them into hell and sent them into pits of gloom to be kept there for judgment. And if he did not spare the ancient world, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, with seven others, when he brought the judgment of the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to the destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them an example to those who would live ungodly lives thereafter, and if he rescued righteous Lot, who was, a tor- who was tormented by the immoral conduct of unprincipled and ungodly men, for just that man, while living among them, felt his righteous soul tormented day after day by what he saw and heard of their lawless acts. Then in the light of the fact that all of this is true, be sure that the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from the trial and how to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. And especially those who indulge in the corrupt passions of the sin nature and despise authority, presumptuous and reckless, self-willed and arrogant creatures, despising the majesty of God, the Lord. They do not tremble when they revile angelic majesties, whereas even angels who are superior in might and power do not bring a reviling or defamation accusation against them before the Lord. But these false teachers, like unreasoning animals, mere creatures of instinct, born to be captured and destroyed, reviling things they do not understand, will also perish in their own corruption. In their destroying, they will be destroyed." suffering wrong, destined for punishment as the wages of doing wrong. They count it a delight to revel in the daytime, living luxuriously. They are stains and blemishes on mankind, revealing in their deception even as they feast with you. They have eyes full of adultery, constantly looking for sin, enticing and luring away unstable souls. Having hearts trained in greed, they are children of a curse. Abandoning these straight roads, that is the right way to live, They have gone astray. They have followed the way of the false teacher, Balaam, and the son of Bor, who loved the reward of wickedness. But he was rebuked for his own transgressions. A mute donkey spoke with a man's voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These false teachers are springs without water and mist driven by a tempest for who has reserved the gloom of the black darkness. For uttering arrogant words of vanity, pompous words disguised to sound scholarly or profound, but meaning nothing and containing no spiritual truth, they beguile and lure away using lustful desires by sensuality those who barely escape from the ones who live in error. They promise them liberty when they themselves are slaves of depravity. For by whatever anyone is defeated or overcome, to that person, thing, philosophy, or concept, he is continually enslaved. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world by personal knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, their last condition has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them not to have personally known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then turned back from the holy commandment verbally handed to them. The thing spoken of the truth, true proverb, has happened to them. The dog returns to his own vomit, and a sow is washed only to wallow again in the mire. Beloved, I am now writing you this second letter. In this, as in the first one, I am stirring up your untamed mind to remind you that you should remember the words spoken in the past about the future by the holy prophets and the commandments of the Lord and Savior given by your apostle, his personally chosen representative. First of all, know without any doubt that the mockers will come in the last days with their mocking following after their own human desires and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Where has, what has become of it? For ever since fathers fell asleep in death, all things have continued continually as they did from the beginning of creation. For they will willingly forget the fact that, they, that the heavens existed long ago by the word of God and the earth was formed out of water by water through which the world at the time was destroyed with a flood with water. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly people. Nevertheless, do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord does not delay as though he were unable to act and is not slow about his promise as some count slowness, but is extraordinarily patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. 
But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and the heavens will vanish with a mighty and thunderous roar, and the material elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and the works that are on it will be burned up. Since all of these things are to be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you be in the meantime in holy behavior, that is, pattern of daily life that sets you apart as a believer, and in godliness displaying profound reverence towards our awesome God? while you earnestly look and await for the coming day of God. For on this day the heavens will be destroyed by burning, and the material elements will melt with intense heat. But in accordance with his promise, we can expectantly wait new heavens and a new earth in which right righteousness dwells. So, beloved, since you are looking forward to these things, be diligent and make every effort to be found in him and at his return, spotless and blameless, in peace, that is, inwardly calm, with a sense of spiritual well-being and confidence, having lived a life of obedience to him, and consider the patience of our Lord, his delay in judging and avenging wrongs, as salvation, that is, allowing time for more to be saved, just as our beloved pro brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him by God, speaking about these things as he does in all of his letters, in which there are some things that are difficult to understand, which the untaught and unstable who have fallen into error twist and misinterpret, just as they do the rest of Scripture to their own destruction. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let me warn you, beloved, knowing that these things beforehand be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men who distort doctrine and fall from your steadfastness of mind and knowledge and truth and faith, but instead grow spiritually mature in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, honor, majesty, splendor, both now and in the day of eternity. Amen.